You are about to listen to Kaku chapter 59. The meaning of message of the hour. Preached on Sunday morning. May 14th, 2006. In, Abobo, Abijan, Ivory Coast. Extracted from the book of prophet Kaku Philippe. The only true prophet sent by the Lord Jesus Christ. In fulfillment of the cry of Matthew 25 6 for the salvation of our generation. Kaku chapter 59. The meaning of message of the hour. What does message of the hour mean? It is about that I want to speak today. But before that, I have several notes. He that conducts the public confession must be spiritual. Because in case of an opposition and other, he has the last word like the referee on the pitch, him or one of the four ministries of the word. And regarding interventions on confessions, one intervenes in the congregation when this intervention edifies all the assembly. If not, one can advise his brother after the service. If the regular interventions of a brother do not edify the assembly, let him forever keep silent. And if an old brother often confesses or three times successively, the elders must hear him, and if he is a soft brother, not only won't he be able to take the Holy Communion, but he shall not confess anymore, because he does not get any profit from the public confession, and he makes it a formality and a pretext of sin. He shall be considered like a pagan. The congregation says, Amen. Also, I have just got the English version of Darby, the version of 1884. And I went straight to see what is said in Revelation 12 verse 18, and I found that there is no verse 18 to Revelation 12, and the first verse of Revelation 13 is, let me read Revelation 13 verse 1. The prophet reads the English version. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw the beast rising out of the sea, having ten horns and seven heads, and upon its horns ten diadems, and upon its heads name of blasphemy. What is translated as, And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rising out of the sea, having ten horns and seven heads, and upon its horns ten diadems and upon its heads names of blasphemy. There is nowhere any verse 18 to Revelation 12, nor it stood upon the sand of the sea. As King James, Louis Sagand and others claim it. And before I had seen that, I said here that it was rather, and I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw, rising out of the sea. And I said so because it's the spirit that is in me, who is the author of the Bible. The congregation says, Amen. May God bless you. We have a special meeting this morning. And you are welcome, you who are here for the first time. Well, during the night of 28 to 29th of March, Brother Fofana had stayed overnight because of the closing work of the Edition Integral Text. And on March 29th morning, while I was finishing that, there was the total eclipse on the four continents. I said, but what can this mean? Why this coincidence? And I have received a certain number of phone calls, among which that of Brother Fofana, who specified the mysterious trajectory of that eclipse. That 180 kilometers wide eclipse crossed 14,500 kilometers, going from America to Asia through Africa. You see? That black band went from America to Asia. It was when I saw that trajectory, that I understood the prophetic scope of that sign. In addition to Matthew 24 verse 27, which says, as the lightning goes forth from the east and shines to the west. You see? It is also by this way that the eclipse goes forth from the west and shines to the east. The congregation says, Amen. That went from Brazil and crossed black Africa to join the east through Egypt. Exactly as God showed it, in the preaching on the four prophetic times of Mark 13:35, Leaving Brazil, that went through countries like Martinique, Haiti and others. That is Matthew 24 verse 27 and Mark 13 35. You see? The congregation says, Amen. In the evening time, people said and are still saying, it's a mere cloud of Tucson. But the prophet said, it is a prophetic sign. That's it. It is not a mere eclipse. 
How many remember that the vision of April 24, 1993 talks about an eclipse? The congregation says, Amen. You see? By the time when the interpretation of the unknown tongue was about to be granted to the Prophet, there was an eclipse in the vision, and by the time when that was about to be given to the whole world, there was a total eclipse on the whole face of the earth. For the pagan world, it is a beautiful event, and several people traveled from Europe to go and see that in Egypt, Libya, and Turkey. That entertains them. All the radio channels of the world spoke about it, astronauts were mobilized. But churches, including Branhamists, were indifferent. Why? Because William Branham did not talk about it. You see? I am not against the Branhamist faith. They have just the apostolic faith, that is why God gave them a pillar of fire. And if you are before a good Branhamist, he will say, what you are saying is good but what is the sign? Has God vindicated that? What sign will he give for me to believe? You see? What does Matthew 12 verse 38 say? We want to see a sign. Their fathers, the sons of the devil, having the message of Moses as their cover, and brandishing Exodus 13 verse 22, after they intimidated all the prophets with whom the pillar of fire was not visible, they got to Jesus. You see? They said, we don't believe unless our eyes see. You see? What do Branhamists say? That's what Thomas, the symbol of the apostolic faith did, you see? The congregation says, Amen. Well, this morning, I would like to preach on the subject, the meaning of message of the hour. I have tried to find a base verse for this preaching, but I have not found any yet. If I don't find any, consider that it is Matthew 25 6. For his ministry, the Lord Jesus only read Isaiah 61 verse 1 to 2. Well, what does message of the hour mean? It is about that I want to speak this morning. Well, one day, God sent a man to the humankind. That man was Noah. What did he say in his preaching? I don't know it. Moses did not know it. Jeremiah, Samuel, Isaiah, William Branham, John Wesley and all the prophets did not know it. Why therefore did not God, through Moses or one of the prophets, reveal what Noah said? They did not do it because that was not necessary. When Moses was preaching, Noah's message was worthless for him. Because there was another generation, another lifestyle, another vision, another mission. The book of Noah's message. The Jews in Egypt did not need it. And today, May 14, 2006, we don't need it. The congregation says, Amen. Thus, there were Moses, Samuel, Isaiah. Well, after Isaiah, there was Jeremiah. And while Jeremiah was prophesying, how many books could the Bible of the Jews contain? The congregation says, 23 books. 23 books. Very good, I can see that you are in the spirit of the preaching. From Genesis to Isaiah, that makes 23 books. Well, the Jews had already 23 books when Jeremiah was prophesying. Yet, those 23 books the Jews did not need them, if they had all the time obeyed God. But notice however, that the most important book of all the prophetic books, was a certain book of the message of Jeremiah. And this book was fought against, burnt once by King Jehoiakim, ridiculed like Jeremiah himself. Jeremiah himself was alive and hated by all. In those days, the living word of God was contained in a book. And that book for the elect had much more value than the book of Samuel, the book of Exodus, the book of Isaiah, and so on. And that is what the Branhamists do not understand. Be it today or in 20 years or in 40 years or even in 200 years, the message of William Branham will always be the word of God, like the book of Haggai, Zephaniah, but only, it is worthless and it can no longer give life to anyone. The book of William Branham, it is the gospel of another generation. The congregation says, Amen. Let's suppose we were living in year 606 before our era, with that Bible of 23 books going from Genesis to Isaiah. What will the will of God be? The will of God for us would neither be the book of Exodus, nor the book of Esther, nor the book of 2 Samuel. 
put the book of a certain Jeremiah still alive on the earth, and setting himself up as a prophet messenger, and declaring that his book had the same prophetic value as any of the 23 books of the Bible. The congregation says, Amen. In those days, the Bible, it was the 23 books. People said to Jeremiah, You said that our synagogues were nets of Satan, we accept it. You said that our versions of Bibles were fetishes, we accept it. You said that our Holy Spirit was the devil, we accept it. But this time, we have seen that you are the Antichrist, you've unveiled yourself. And Jeremiah told them, The prophets whose books you have in your Bible were treated this way by your fathers, and that is no surprise to me if you do not understand me. And while those ones were speaking that way before Jeremiah, others were there, with tears in their eyes saying in their heart, O God, you be blessed. Because it is today, that I realize the value and the goal of the Bible I carry. It is today, that I see, and even the message that I've believed since, it is today, that I understand what it is. The congregation says, Amen. Jeremiah told them, Your Bible is old history. If somebody believes in me, and follows me without having the Bible, he is saved, because I am the light of the world, and the bread which has come down from heaven for you. The congregation says, Amen. They said, But this man is mad. Why do we waste our time listening to him? He wants to make himself the equal of our brother Isaiah. And Jeremiah added, Today, the word of Moses cannot save you. The word of Jesus of Nazareth cannot save you. And there, they sought to kill him saying, is it a sin for someone to kill somebody who says that the word of Jesus cannot save? There was a rabbi who said, No, it is not a sin, Moses says that in this case it is not a sin. And they were full of anger against Jeremiah. Notice that when Jeremiah was on the scene on the earth, the generation of Isaiah had just passed 31 years ago, but people, moreover Jews, acted as if they had no notion of a prophet. You see? Between Isaiah and Jeremiah, there is approximately 71 years, that is, a generation plus 31 years. Jeremiah told them, You are rejecting me, but know that the work of God is to recognize him that he has sent. And today, him that he has sent, it's me Jeremiah that you are fighting. The congregation says, Amen. They retorted, Him that God has sent is Moses. One of them said, We are not rejecting you. But don't say that you are the only one who is the truth. Another one said, And show us where your name, Jeremiah is written in the Bible like Moses and Isaiah, so we may believe because the Bible says that false prophets will come. Jeremiah said to them, I am alone against all your great number of prophets whose photographs are posted on walls. And you think that I am false, while the Bible says that they are the false prophets who will be numerous. Others said again to Jeremiah, We do want to believe in your message, but the Bible. Does our 23 book Bible confirm your message? Show us your message through our Bible. And we believe in nothing except what is written in the Bible. Only the Bible because Moses said that false prophets would come. Jeremiah shouted saying, You sons of the devil, go away. By which message, or which Bible did Noah confirm his message? By which message, or which Bible did Moses confirm his message? By which message, or which Bible did Moses confirm the Genesis? If you want a confirmation, here is the eclipse of April 24th going from Brazil, from Black America to Asia. The congregation says, Amen. If you want a sign, here is the eclipse of March 29th, a sign from heaven for the entire earth, and every eye saw it. If not, my message is not in search for confirmation, and my message does not suffer from any confirmation. A message does not seek any confirmation from another message. The congregation says, Amen. It is rather up to you to find my confirmation in your Bible, you are the ones who need a confirmation. Look for some. You see? In the evening time, God gave a great sign from heaven, and every eye had seen that. A natural cloud for people, but supernatural for God. And the prophet could say, Turn that and you will see. 
And when they turned it, they saw this supernatural side. And if today, the world can turn the photograph of that eclipse, it will see that it is a supernatural sign coming from God, in confirmation of this message. The Bible said, for as the lightning goes forth from the east to the west. Notice that from the east to the west, that forms a semicircle. But where is the other half of the big circle of the earth? Like the rainbow, behold the other half here. On this side, going from the west to the east. What is it? God himself confirming his word. The congregation says, Amen. Jeremiah did not seek the confirmation of his message in any of the 23 books before him. Neither in the book of Samuel, nor the book of Leviticus, nor in the book of Isaiah, nor in the book of a prophet who came before him. If you think that the purpose of a Bible is to confirm messages, or to support the preachings of the churches, then you have not understood anything of Christianity. You see? Give each book back to its generation, and you will see that, Bible Institute, pastoral school, and all that do not mean anything and the world does not need them. The congregation says, Amen. Give each book back to its generation, and you will see that you are naked. This is madness. When you see in the Bible, book of Isaiah, understand through that, the book of the generation of prophet Isaiah, or book of prophet Isaiah for his generation. The current Christianity has missed its mission. You see? Reject the prophet of your time and do whatever you want, put the photograph of Jesus, Peter, Mary, Mary of Magdala in your living room, hang crosses on the wall. But you are an imposter. In the eyes of God, you are only a madman. God sees you as one sees a madman, with worthless bags and luggage. Islam, Christianity and Judaism are the three great manifestations of Satan on the earth. They are the three spirit of frogs in Revelation 16 verse 13. These three religions claim to be of Abraham. These three religions believe in Moses. These three religions do not believe in living prophets, but each claims to be of a prophet that it did not know. Each of them has its own holy book. And all three are waiting for the Messiah. They are the three spirits of frog of Revelation 16 verse 13. The congregation says, Amen. They told Jeremiah, Are you sinless for you to speak to us in that manner? Are you the Savior now? Have you taken the place of Moses? Is it in your name that everything is done now? Jeremiah told them, Do you know the life of the prophets and messengers, of whom you carry the books in your Bible? You claim yourselves of such and such prophet, while you did not know them on the earth. They even died before your birth. You are sons of the devil. At the judgment, those of whom they are really the fathers. When they see them, they will recognize them, but you, you are grafts, bats. You are sons of the devil. The congregation says, Amen. And they were trying to kill Jeremiah, while what Jeremiah was telling them was the truth. And it is the same thing today. The one who loves you, it is I who tell you the truth. I, who seek to lead the Catholics, Protestants, Evangelicals and Branhamists to Christ. You can only be saved by the living prophet of your time. The congregation says, Amen. Can you go shopping at the supermarket with an old banknote? A banknote of 1960? You see? It is a true banknote but it's time passed. It is removed from the market. Even if you have it in your hands, even if this banknote is a true one, you cannot go shopping with this banknote today. And it is the same for the Bible and salvation. Everything you do on the basis of the Bible, it is the devil from one end to the other. The congregation says, Amen. When Nebuchadnezzar was coming to destroy Jerusalem, the priests and prophets proclaimed Esther fasts, Jehoshaphat fasts. Instead of coming to Jeremiah, the prophet of their time. And they even made King Zedekiah, a pagan like this, fast. They made all they could to dress King Zedekiah like a lamb of God, they called him Solomon, Moses, Joseph, David, and all the names of good kings whom Israel knew. But when he had to say who he was, he said, I am Sundiatokaita, a pagan king. The congregation says, Amen. You see? A pagan king. And all the false prophets and priests wrote in their books. King Zedekiah walked in the way of David. 
and he did not turn a sight out of it, neither on the left nor on the right. But Jeremiah wrote in his book King Zedekiah did not follow the way of David. Amen. And it was exactly thus with Ahab. You see? Ahab offered many holocausts like Solomon, and the prophet said, Jehovah says that you are David. Go up and fight today like David. And the same prophets prophesied on his wife, Jezebel a Zidonian, saying, Jehovah says that you are Esther. And after Elijah, God sent Micah, a small prophet who did not have as much influence as Elijah, but he had a special feature, God revealed to him the evil spirits that use the other prophets. And Micah, this small prophet who came after Elijah, gave only one prophecy to Ahab saying, If thou return at all in peace, Jehovah has not spoken to me, you see? If his throne becomes stronger at peace, then Jehovah did not speak to me at all. That's all. It is the only sign. The congregation says, Amen. You see? It is not that Ahab wanted to go up and fight, but they were the prophets of Baal who persuaded him. That's why he disguised himself. And when this man drew this bow in the air, it was not directed against him. But it was the thus saith the Lord of Elijah, that seized this arrow in the air, turned it and directed it towards Ahab. You see? There is no type in the Bible, you cannot say to this king, you are this king, do like that king. And you cannot say to a generation. The message of this prophet to his generation is also for you. Even if things look the same, but it is not possible. And God has never sent to a generation a dead prophet, a corpse, that never existed. He cannot send a living prophet to a generation and to another generation a book, or a already dead prophet. But they will be different prophets with different messages. The congregation says, Amen. John the Baptist and the Lord Jesus Christ, it's almost the same time but they had two different messages, one had even a baptism of repentance, and the other a baptism for the remission of sins. And the Lord Jesus Christ said, I am alive for ages to ages and I walk in the midst of the seven golden lamps. The Lord Jesus Christ is today among the nations, arousing prophets as he did it in the Old Testament. And if you are an elect, you'd better look for the living Jesus Christ of your generation. And when you find him, make it known to me Kaku Philippe also, so that we may go to worship him. Apart from that, know that you have a historical faith and that you will go to hell. The congregation says, Amen. When Jeremiah, the prophet messenger, declared that his book had much more value than any of the 23 books of their Bible, some said, It is a blasphemy. Others despised him, hated him, especially since he did not have an influential appearance. You see? In the days of Jeremiah, what should they do to escape Nebuchadnezzar? What should they do? Should they go to Egypt or not? The answer was in the book of Jeremiah, not with the priests or scribes, but in the book of Jeremiah. The answer was not with the other prophets who existed before Jeremiah, or who were there at the time of Jeremiah, but only with Jeremiah. When Jeremiah was prophesying, the children of God had already given much more value to his book, than to each of the 23 books of their Bible. The book of Jeremiah had much more value for them than each of the 23 books of their Bible. The congregation says, Amen. When Abdias was prophesying, the children of God had already given greater value to the book of Abdias than to each of the 30 books of their Bible. When Amos was prophesying, the children of God had already given much more value to his book than to each of the 29 books of their Bible. And it was so for each prophet during his ministry and his generation. The congregation says, Amen. And when the small prophet Abdias was performing his ministry, in year 599 before our era, for that year 599, the living word of God was not one of the 30 books, which their Bible had then. But the living word of God was Abdias' small sheet of paper. It is never a scribe or a priest, but one living prophet. You see? And if that is the case, the will of God will never come to a pastor, an apostle, 
or teacher, or evangelist, or prophet of church, but rather to a prophet messenger. That is why I say that no prophet, pastor, evangelist, reverend, apostle, or teacher, or other apart from the prophet messenger can write a book. The congregation says, Amen. With the Jews. All those who are in charge of writing are scribes. And they wrote Jewish people's books of history, which are the books of Kings, Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther and many others. Have you seen the book of a priest in your Bible? Have you seen the book of the chief priest in your Bible? Did chief priest Abiathar write? Did chief priest Elnathan write? Did chief priest Zadok write? But see these churches of Satan today. See these children of the devil. Some others already wrote four, five, six books. And yet, Habakkuk, one book, Daniel, one book, Ezekiel, one book, Malachi, one book, Amos, one book, Joel, one book. Do not be distracted. God will swallow them all. Not only them but also those who read them and listen to them. The congregation says, Amen. Well, let's come back to John the Baptist now. I'm going to take the case of the Lord Jesus Christ to go faster. Well, when the Lord Jesus Christ was preaching, the Bible contained 39 books, going from Genesis to Malachi. For the sons of the devil, till the end of the world there will be only 39 books. And yet, the living word of God for the elect in that time was the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. When the Lord Jesus Christ was preaching, the book that was valuable to the elect was not contained in their 39-book Bible. You see? That is what we are confronted to today. If the world ended at the time of the prophet Isaiah, Jews would not know that the Bible would one day go beyond 23 books. If the world ended with John the Baptists, Jews would not know that the Bible would go one day beyond 39 books. And the humankind does not know that at the judgment, it will see itself before more than 66 books. And in Revelation 20 verse 12, John recognized the books of the prophets that had come before the Lord Jesus Christ, and he also recognized the message of the Lord Jesus Christ, as being the book of life of his time. Books that were books of the prophets from Adam were opened. And another book was opened which was the book of the prophet of his time that is to say, of the Lord Jesus Christ. And for this generation at the judgment of the white throne, books will be opened, the book of Matthew, the books of Jeremiah, Isaiah, and so on, the books of all the prophets who came before me will be opened, and another book will be opened which is that of prophet Kaku Philippe. The book of life in your generation. The congregation says, Amen. Books were opened and another book was opened. You see? But Daniel 7 says, Thrones were set, and the judgment was set, and the books were opened. Daniel saw the final judgment. The spirit of Daniel entered into the council of God's judgment. Daniel means, him who judges for God. And I, son of Kaku Daniel, I have been led several times to speak about the final judgment, and what it will be. It is the spirit of Daniel. The congregation says, Amen. Each generation will have one book for the judgment. Each generation, one book, each generation, one book. It was not only the unknown tongue that Daniel saw, but Daniel saw all these things, and as his spirit comes back on earth, the earth receives what it is of it. The congregation says, Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, put down your old beliefs, and your intellectual luggage and your reasonings and you will see that it is the spirit of Elijah, Daniel and Jesus Christ that are working through this ministry of Matthew 25 6, without you being explained anything. What will save you or condemn you is in the prophetic message of your time. The congregation says, Amen. In the Gospel of Noah are the judgment and the redemption for his generation only. At the judgment of the white throne, Korah and Dathan will not be asked, what attitude they had had before the message of Noah. Tommy Osborne and his group will not be asked what attitude they had had when Jews were sawing Isaiah into pieces. The generation of William Branham will not be asked 
What attitude it had had when Prophet Kaku Philippe was preaching on earth. In Acts 19. If those disciples of John the Baptist had died before they met Paul, they were saved without the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and with their baptism of repentance. But while they met Paul, if they had refused to be rebaptized, they would have gone straight to hell. You see? I believe that you understand. So explain it to the Branimists. The congregation says, Amen. Every generation will come forth before the message of its time. You see? If a Bible were to be presented in the millennium, it would have more than 66 books. And the prophetic book of God for this generation would be inserted in it. Thus from 1906 to 2002. One book. William Marion Branham's. So from 1965 to 2002, no book and since 2002, the book of Prophet Kaku Philippe, the congregation says, Amen. It is the book of the Bible for our generation. It is the book of life of the Lamb for our generation. You have heard that, it is the book containing the message of a prophet that enlightens the Bible, but it is more than that. God does not send a message to enlighten the Bible. It is the book of the Bible for our generation. It is the most living book of the Bible for our generation. It is the most living book of the Bible for every chosen one today. More living than the book of Isaiah. More living than the book of Jeremiah. More living than the book of Joel. More living than the book of Malachi. More living than the book of Moses, Jesus of Nazareth, Paul and of all the prophets. The congregation says, Amen. Oh! Glorious message! Precious light! The Bible has the same value as the history of the Church of the Nations speaking of John Huss, Martin Luther, John Wesley and others. Thus, I cannot believe in what Martin Luther did in 1520 and be saved. And if one can believe in a past message to be saved, in a 40 year ago past message to be saved, I will believe in that of Moses. Jeremiah or Isaiah as the Pharisees did before the Lord Jesus. I'd better believe in Noah, Moses, Isaiah, or one of the prophets that the Bible has itself authenticated. And if in 2002, after having rejected the midnight cry, one can comfortably set himself in William Branham's seat, and be saved then at the judgment, the Lord Jesus Christ has to apologize to the Pharisees. The congregation says, Amen. Even the devil confesses that we are at midnight, and how will a son of God not be aware of it? E. World Frank says that we are at midnight, and that his circular letters have to be regarded as the midnight cry. I emphasize that he started publishing circular letters since 1966. Alexis Perlier says that, the midnight cry is omitted by the Lord himself through several servants of God. At the judgment. When the generation of Amos or Jeremiah comes, should it be judged with Noah's message or William Branham's? Is that possible while they did not know Noah or William Branham? And how can you Catholics, Protestants, Evangelicals or Branhamists claim to belong to Jesus Christ? You claim to belong to Jesus Christ, while Jesus Christ himself said that he had been sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And in Matthew 23 verse 34 to 35, he promised prophets to the nations. You reject his prophets, and you claim to belong to him, as Jews rejected the prophets that God sent to them to claim to belong to Moses. According to Revelation 20 verse 12, at the judgment of the white throne, which book will God judge you with? With Jeremiah's book? Are you of the generation of Jeremiah? Do you know Pashur? Do you know Baruch? the son of Nerijah. Do you know Jehoiakim? Do you know Zedekiah? At the judgment of the white throne, God will ask you, when you were on earth, was the leader of Israel Zedekiah or Ariel Sharon? You see? Stop seducing yourselves. Did you support or oppose Jeremiah in his afflictions? You see? You have nothing to do with the generations of these books of Jeremiah, Isaiah or others. Like in the days of Noah, Abel, and Enoch, Jeremiah's book could not even be added to the Bible, and God was going to achieve his goal today. Be it the book of Matthew, Luke or other, it is the same. But at the judgment, there is a book that will be opened, and when you hear names like Tommy Osborne, 
e world frank, kaku philippe, then that will mean something to you. You see? When you hear the preaching on the papacy according to Daniel 11, or the final seduction according to 1 Kings 19, you will say, I heard that on the earth. But a man of Noah's generation will say, But what's that? Who is speaking? You see? He will not know. But you know that it is the voice of the prophet Kaku Philippe. Similarly, you also, when you see Noah's ark you will say, But what is this large boat? It must be a fishing vessel. Or a cargo ship. But somebody of Noah's generation will exclaim, Oh! It is Noah's ark. You see? In the beginning was already the Lord Jesus Christ, the living word. Thus, the message of Jeremiah, is the living Jesus Christ for the generation of Jeremiah. The message of Noah, is the living Jesus Christ for the generation of Noah. The message of Amos, is the living Jesus Christ for the generation of Amos. Jesus Christ himself preaching in the streets of Jerusalem, is the living Jesus Christ for the generation of Peter, John, James, Mary of Magdala, Elizabeth, Susanna, and all those who lived at their time. And today, the midnight cry, is the living Jesus Christ for our generation. The congregation says, Amen. The solution to all the acts of Satan in the churches, and in the life of people today is not in a book of the Bible, but in the book of prophet Kaku Philippe. You say, I see too many dreams. I feel some burning or fire sensations like Joseph Coleman, I feel this, I feel that. The solution is neither in any of the 66 books of the Bible, nor in the message of William Branham, but in the book of prophet Kaku Philippe. The most important book of the Bible for this generation, is the book of prophet Kaku Philippe. The congregation says, Amen. Well, the Branhamist Joseph Coleman feels some burning sensations from head to toes. Pins and needles sensations too. You see? At the beginning, when he felt those fire sensations, he certainly considered them good as that is the case of a multitude of people, saying that it is the fire of the Holy Spirit. But when the thing became worrying, he asked his disciples to pray for him. But if you, the Master, are possessed with demons, how will the disciples be able to deliver you? Yet, those fire sensations are a physical manifestation of the spirit of divination. You see? Even if he dies before he hears the midnight cry, he is guilty before God, because he had to seek the living prophet of his time. And now, if a man of the generation of Moses comes and stands in the lot of prophet Kaku Philippe, it is like an Englishman among the Swahili. Did you notice what happened at the opening of the fifth seal? The Jews in time of grace ask God to avenge their blood on the inhabitants on the earth. And on that, one day, E. World Frank asked William Branham, if God still imputes the sin of the six million Jews killed under the Nazi regime to Germany? The answer is simple. If God imputed to all the Jews the blood of Jesus shed by Jews 1900 years ago, without any exception, then the crime of the Germans rests on E. World Frank and all the Germans. And if a son of God in Germany hears me, he will say, O oh God, have mercy on us. The congregation says, Amen. And when New World Frank publishes the wisdom of William Branham, saying that the fault falls on those who killed those Jews, it is a trap and act of a serpent to trap Germans. You say, Brother Philippe, there are churches who did not agree with that regime. Yes, there were some Jews also who did not agree with the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus, but they were all massacred or deported in year 70 without any exception. Those churches had to oppose the massacres of those Jews, to the risk of their life. What E. World Frank should ask to William Branham, is what Germany must do faced with this curse. You see? All the Jews did not crucify the Lord Jesus, but they were all deported. You see? I do not know E. World Frank, this cousin of Benedict XVI but he is a powerful instrument in Satan's hands. Maybe he does not know it, but that is what he is. You see? He distracts people, he even leads astray and puts people's conscience to sleep, on insignificant things that the message of William Branham had gone past. 
If it is not a banal thing that occurred somewhere that he speaks of, it is of Islam if not of Rome, or the Catholicism. Insignificant things. Outdated things. You see? As true as God exists, also true, e world Frank is the Antichrist. The congregation says, Amen. He that has received power to mislead the elect if that were possible. Is e world Frank. Not the Pope of Rome that Martin Luther unveiled more than 500 years ago, but it is him, e world Frank. And like Tommy Osborne for the Protestant Pope. Just as the Catholic Pope receives authority to animate the image of the Catholic dragon, similarly, e world Frank and William Branham's children, are today the two seals of the physical manifestation of Satan, who receive authority to animate the image of the Branhamist dragon. The congregation says, Amen. You see? Oh! That came like a prophecy. Amen. These two animals are the two spirits that animate all this diversity of Branhamist species, who do not have any relationship with themselves, and who cannot have the Holy Communion with one another, and yet they proceed from the same message. Well, let's come back a little again through the Bible. We, men of the nations, we see what behavior people had before the prophets, and what characterizes the true prophets. But what saves us, is our behavior before the gospel of our time. If you think that all that is in such and such a book of the Bible, helps you have a good position before the message of your time. That's very good because that is the greatest goal of the Bible, it's that. With the Bible, you have to know what God does in each generation. How a prophet comes, how he is treated and how everything happens. That is the purpose of the Bible. But if you think that the message of such a Jewish prophet, is what you must accept to be saved while living a good life, you would better think again. Reread your Bible, and you will see that the message of that prophet to the Jews, is different from the message of the other next prophet. Because it is not the same dispensation, it is not the same generation, it is not even the same king. You see? How can God send prophets to Israel, and condemn Israel for their behavior towards his prophets, and you men of the nations? Will you be saved simply by believing in ancient history? But you also, to be saved, God must send you prophets. And God will see if you will not reject his prophets, persecute his prophets, imprison his prophets or kill his prophets. But what does God want to show to the humankind through the Bible? A single and same message, recognize your day and its message. The congregation says, Amen. Thanks to what happened to the Jews, every generation of the nations must be able to identify, with the Bible, the true prophet of its time. Here is the purpose of the Bible. But if the Bible does not help you recognize your day of visitation, and the message of God to your generation, then it is useless to have it. The goal of the Bible is not that you believe in the message of Malachi, or Zephaniah, or the Gospel of Jesus of Nazareth to be saved. You see? Believing that you can be saved by basing your faith on a prophet who is already dead, or on the Bible or on the Quran, it is Satanism. The congregation says, Amen. Prophet Malachi, that was 2400 years ago. And if it is question of believing in a historical Jesus Christ who walked in the streets of Jerusalem, all the churches would be pure of his blood. Each one would say, if I were over there in Israel, I would not join the Jews to crucify him. But from generation to generation, God has always tried the humankind by Jesus Christ, living in word as in the streets of Jerusalem. You see? In the days of prophet Elijah, you'd better believe and follow Elijah, and ignore all that the Bible said before him, rather than to follow all the law and the prophets of before Elijah, and reject Elijah. In the days of the Lord Jesus Christ, You'd better believe and follow the Lord Jesus Christ, and ignore all that Moses and the prophets said before him, rather than rejecting the Lord Jesus. And that is what the Pharisees did not understand over there, and that is what the churches do not understand on the whole face of the earth today. God said to Elijah, Yet I have left you seven thousand whose knees that have not bowed unto Baal. Could somebody say, I did not follow Elijah, but my knees have not bowed unto Baal either? No. That is not possible. Either you follow Elijah or you follow the devil. And today, 
Either you follow the prophet Kaku Philippe or you follow the devil. The congregation says, Amen. You cannot be saved outside the living prophet of your time. It is as if in the days of Noah, somebody could be saved outside Noah's ark. That is not possible. Well, let's stand up now. This morning how many people would like to accept this message? Please, simply raise your hand so we can pray for you. If you believe this message, if you believe that this is the fulfillment of Matthew 25 6, simply raise your hand. May God bless you. May God bless you. Amen. Amen. You've just listened to Kaku Chapter 59. The Meaning of Message of the Hour The message of Prophet Kaku Philippe is in more than 100 sermons, in audio and written versions, and more than 20 video interviews. You can get them for free on the website www.philipkaku.org or in version for mobile phone 1-800-227-5433